Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So why'd she walk you guys out here? Thank you.
Yeah, that's like snow in Colorado. <laughs> We have a two-minute warning on the briefing. Two-minute warning on the briefing. Thank you. funny. Hello. All right, everyone. Happy Friday. Hi. 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 It's been a long week, guys. It's 
been a long week. Okay, I got a couple toppers for, for all. So President Biden's economic plan is working, and thanks to his rescue plan and our successful vaccine program, America continues to add jobs at a record place, pace. 620,000 a month on average and over 5.6 million jobs created since he took office. Americans are getting back to work because of the success of that effort. Our economy has the resilience we need to weather the challenges posed by this virus. More Americans are going back to work and more Americans feel safe going back to work. That's why we added 531,000 jobs in October and the unemployment rate fell to 4.6%, the lowest level since the beginning of the pandemic and the place that the CBO projected before the rescue plan was passed that we wouldn't reach until the fourth quarter of 2023. Unemployment has decreased this year more than any other year in U.S. history, and the number of Americans filing for unemployment each week has declined from nearly 900,000 when President Biden took office to under 270,000 this week. Because of the decisive action the President took with the rescue plan and his efforts to fight the pandemic, our economy has rebounded at a rate unsurpassed in modern history, far outstripping those of our peer countries. And because of that, businesses were able to stay open, schools were able to reopen, and Americans are able to get back to work. It's been a busy week, um, making strong progress in our fight against COVID-19. So I also wanted to give an overview of this work, the work that we've been doing around the pandemic and fighting the pandemic. On Monday, we hit 80% of adults with at least one shot and 70% of adults fully vaccinated. And we're still vaccinating hundreds of thousands of Americans every day. Last Tuesday, CDC's decision made 28 million kids aged five through 11 eligible for vaccination. This was was a huge sigh of relief for parents and means 95% of Americans are now eligible for vaccination. Since then, you've seen kids rolling up their sleeves at pediatrician offices, pharmacies, and children's hospitals. Many more will this weekend and next weekend, just like my little one. She's going to be getting her uh, shot on Wednesday. And I thank uh, the team, the, the awesome team, for putting a plan in place to making that happen. So thanks to our preparation, we're re all already getting children protected from this virus. And yesterday we rolled out vaccination requirements that will cover about 100 million American workers, two thirds of workers in the US. These requirements have already helped reduce the number of unvaccinated Americans, 12 and older, by about 40%. A few other key points on yesterday's announcements. They're going to save American lives and help our eco economic recovery. To quote just one outside economist, Yale professor Larry Samuelson, economic recovery requires solving the public health problem. Vaccines are our most powerful tool in bringing the virus under control. They boost vaccination rates on average by 20 points, often to over 90%. More vaccinations means saving American lives and it means avoiding COVID-related absences in the workplace. And we continue to see companies implement these requirements effectively and with little of the concerns that reporting cites. Today, Pfizer, with the collaboration of the NIH, showed incredible promising data for its antiviral pill that treats COVID. Uh, this is all subject to pending regulatory reviews, but our understanding is that this is an incredibly promising possible tool in our first again in our fight against the virus, with vaccinations being the most important tool. So let me be clear, the work is not over. We have tens of millions of Americans left to vaccinate, and we remain more than vigilant in this, in this fight against the virus. But what is clear right now is that the president's plan to accelerate the path out of the pandemic is working. We are saving American lives and helping our economy continue to recover. And finally, we have a very short preview of the week ahead for next week. On Monday, the president will welcome the Milwaukee Bucks to the White House to celebrate the team winning the 2020 21 NBA championship. On Thursday, the president will honor America's military members and veterans at Arlington National Cemetery. He will participate in a wreath-laying ceremony at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and deliver remarks 
the Nash at the National Veterans the National Veteran Day observance at the Memorial Amphitheater. And with that, I will give it to you. Thanks. Uh, can you give us uh, an update on uh, who the president has reached out to today uh, and has pushed to get uh, Build Back Better and uh, bit to the finish line? He said when we saw him this morning, that's what he was going to do in the Oval yeah. Office. Any update you can give yeah, us? Yeah, like you said, he was pretty clear um, this morning at the end of his comments on the economy, on the jobs numbers, uh, that he was going to go go back into the Oval Office and going to continue to uh, continue to you know close this out. Uh, so the president, as he stated, is in close touch uh, with House members, advocating for yes votes for the Build Back Better uh, Act and the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Like he said this morning, it's all about giving the middle class breathing room. And if and we you know we continue to say if you're concerned about costs, that's one of the best arguments for passing the Build Back Better Act, which will take some of the biggest financial trends that have worked against middle-class families like high costs of prescription drugs and and be a down payment against inflation by getting more Americans into the workforce so he's going to continue to, to work the phones he's going to continue to stay in close touch and stay in lockstep with speaker Pelosi on uh, on getting this done everybody there's a sense of urgency as you've heard us say uh, from everyone from all the members uh, on the hill to get this done for the American people and uh, inaction is not the answer, so we're going to try and get this done. Anyone specifically you, you talk I, to today? That you I can... don't have any calls to preview or to read out at this time, but as 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 you can imagine, as he said himself, he's getting to work and can, keeping in close touch with, with folks um, on the Hill. House leadership indicated today that it'll take some time to get the CBO score ready. Um, with that in mind, why is the president urging lawmakers, as he said this morning, mm -hmm. to vote yes on both of these bills right now? Why not give these folks some time to to, to see what the CBO says um, and, and, and do their jobs? So as you know, the Build Back Better framework that the president put forth and also the um, bipartisan infrastructure uh, 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 bill is paid for. This is something that uh, the president was very clear that he wanted to make sure happened, um, that as we move forward with these historical investments, and as yesterday's score from the Joint Committee on Taxation uh, indicated, and as shown by the numbers calculated by economists across the administration, which aligns with the J JCTs, and the, what I'm talking about is the Treasury blog that came out yesterday that laid out, you, all, you, all, you saw that it reaffirmed uh, by Moody's an analyst uh, uh, this bill is fully paid for by asking the wealthy to contribute their fair share, and that is exact, exactly uh, how we're going to, to, to move forward with that and also reduce the deficit. So the big thing that we continue to say is the time is now uh, to take action. Uh, as we saw from, uh, from Tuesday, the American public wants us to move. They want us to, to move forward and actually deliver. And so that's what we're trying to do as an administration, deliver for the American public and make sure that this transformative bill uh, really, truly moves forward so it can make a difference in people's lives. Okay. Thanks. Um, the Speaker Pelosi just put out a dear colleague saying it is important that they advance both bills today. And you were just referring to the President's comments where he's called for them to vote right now. Is it the President's expectation that these there will be votes today. Well, so I can't speak for the mechanism. Like, I don't have the schedule, you know, the floor schedule, as you can imagine. Uh, but the president's been very clear that he wants these passed. He wants these bills move forward. Uh, you know, if, it, if it's today, that's wonderful. That's great. Because by moving them forward, we are making sure that we're taking action for the American public. So we're going to, again, work in lockstep with Leader, uh, with leader uh, Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer to get these done. Uh, but you know, we have a confidence in her and in, in, uh, in her leadership, and so uh, we, I leave it to them on when this is going to get done. I just want to follow up on what you're saying about the cost, because the Moody's Analytics uh, says that, you know, as, as the bill is right now in static terms, it would add modestly to the deficit over 10 years. So the numbers are different if you account for potential economic growth, like you were referring to, but that's hard to guarantee. So can you give assurances right here 
that this will be 100% paid for when everything is said and done. Because right now, moderates don't feel like they have those assurances. Yes, we can give assurance that it will be 100% paid for. Um, that's what we have seen for Moody's, as I just mentioned. Um, that's what uh, we put out, you know, numbers ourselves, the scores ourselves, to show that it'll be more than paid for, um, but um, to pay for, for, for the bill. And so we are confident. We are keeping that promise, making sure that uh, people who make less than four hundred thousand dollars do not uh, see uh, any taxes, uh, tax uh, taxes on them, and also just making sure that it doesn't add to the deficit. That is that is the that is the red line, if you will, that the president had when it came to this to, the, to his economic policies. I ask one more follow really fast. When you um, uh, to that point of what the arguments that the moderates are making, you know, they would. They've made an argument similar to it, how you started. Yeah. You started by saying that there's these positive economic numbers, these positive job numbers, yeah. and that that might be indication that such a big spending package just isn't necessary right now. So what's your what's your answer to that? So, that this is actually plays to what they're so, saying. So two two parts. What I was saying is that the numbers that the jobs numbers that we saw today is 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 an is an improvement. We're seeing that the, the economy uh, is moving forward, and the reason why is because of the American Rescue Plan. The reason why is because we're getting shots into the in people's arms. The reason why is that people are feeling more comfortable. They're going back to work because they're getting vaccinated, and that American Rescue Plan, that historic bill that the president passed and only Democrats uh, voted for, actually put money in people's pockets. Actually gave gave a middle class tax uh, tax cut to, to families that was incredibly important. So what we're trying to do is continue that investment with his economic policy, the Build Back Better Act, and uh, the infrastructure bill, which are also transformative, as I just said, and historical. So what we know and what we have, what we have, uh, what we understand is, uh, and one of the best arguments that to make for the Build Back Better Act is that 17 Nobel Prize winners in economics, as you've heard us say, and the president say, agreed that it will reduce infl inf inflationary pressures, which is so important and so critical right now. The Wall Street analy an an uh, analytics firm, Moody's, said the same thing again yesterday. So Build Back Better is fully paid for and will even reduce the deficit over the long term as numbers from Moody's, JCT, which is, the, which is um, what came out yesterday, and what our administration put forward in that Treasury blog that I mentioned yesterday. So that's what we have and that's what we understand. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Democratic Representative Joyce Beattie said today that the House could vote today on Biden's trillion dollar infrastructure package but could postpone action on the Build Back Better plan over its cost. And I wondered if you could say if that is acceptable to the President or if he sees it as a betrayal of progressive demands. So here, here's what I, I'll say to that. It's like I, you know, I'm not going to negotiate or, or you know, uh, Give you know, speak to hypotheticals from here. Uh, our main thing is that we want to see the both bills done. Uh, we are working in lockstep with Speaker Pelosi, and as you know, the president and and his team has been uh, talking to members and their staff for the past several weeks. We're continuing to do that today, and we're going to get this done. Inaction is not the answer, and we got to move forward and, and deliver for the American public. On a separate topic, uh, Biden today mentioned that his administration had secured millions of doses of the Pfizer. COVID-19 pill. Could you give us any detail on how many millions, when the delivery is expected, and how much it'll cost? So um, I don't, um, so as far as the contract, because that would be a, a contract component, um, so like you said, we're, we're securing millions of doses. Should, the, should, should this receive, right, the regulatory approval, as the President said? Uh, so we have already contracted for millions of doses of the Merck antiviral drug in development as well. And so the contract is being finalized, and I would refer you to uh, HHS for more information as it is available. But what's important here is the, that we encourage unvaccinated people to get vaccinated, so we don't want anyone to get COVID in the first place. So that's the thing that we want to make sure that people understand, is that you, we still want you to get vaccinated. This is, yes, wonderful and a great, uh, has promising potential. It still has to go through the process, but people, it's very important for people to get vaccinated. Thanks, Green. Um, you noted JCT and Moody's 
Do you guys have a sense in terms of the uh, Penn Wharton uh, analysis? You know, we've heard some Republicans talk about it. I think Senator Manchin has mentioned an iteration of it in the past, but finding that there would be a shortfall in the 10-year window overall, plus 3.9 trillion. What's kind of your read on that analysis? Yeah. So, so the biggest problem with uh, Penn Wharton's uh, report is that they didn't model the actual bill. And so, for one thing, they incorrectly assume just 1.56 trillion in offsets when the Build Back Better agenda is fully paid for, with over two trillion dollars in offsets that the president outlined in the Build Back Better framework that he put out last week, as you all know. And as the Joint Committee on Taxation, which is what we've been talking about, uh, and our own numbers, which align with each other, confirm they underestimate. They underestimate. This is Penn Wharton by 290. $2 billion, the combined revenue impact of the corporate minimum tax, stock buybacks, international corporate adjusted gross income surcharge, surcharge for those making more than $10 million. So the net income investment tax and loss limitation compared to JCT scoring. So they also don't include key areas of Build Back Better that will increase economic growth, like the child tax credit, putting more Americans to work, investing in affordable housing. So, for example, just to give an example here, when it comes to the child tax credit, the analysis does not consider the benefits that most 450 economists, including four Nobel Prize, Prize winners, recently highlighted in an open letter. They also assume that unpaid uh, for extensions of the programs are happening, which is not a reasonable assumption at all and rest on the change on the changing the president's stated position. So, you know, I'm not sure what they modeled here. But it isn't what the Build Back Better Act, Big Build Back Better Act, actually is. And then we, I think you asked about the president, but in terms of on the staff side of things, obviously yeah. your team put together the budget analysis last night, the preliminary budget analysis yeah. last night. Is there anything else you can talk about in terms of what they've been doing today to try and mollify some of the concerns of those five or six moderate I, I don't have anything specific. You know, these conversations are continuing to happen, um, and so I don't want to, you know, get ahead of ahead of that. Uh, but I can say we're working very, very closely uh, with members and their staff um, to make sure that we deliver for the American public. Again, these are transformational. These are historical. These are going to change the lives of millions of Americans, and we want to get this done. In terms of uh, the message coming out of the election on Tuesday, that there are certainly moderate members who are particularly concerned that if they don't have things like a CBO score and some reassurances about the uh, fiscal boundaries of the Build Back Better legislation, that they themselves could be in peril uh, when it comes to the midterm elections. What sort of conversations is the president having on that point? Does he understand? Uh, that kind of concern that they're applying in, uh, in, in how they proceed with this now that the urgency of getting this done prior to the election that's just gone by, um, it seems to be, you know, eased up a bit. Well, I can't speak to, you know, I can't be a political pundit up here, but I can say that the president was pretty clear, I thought, after um, his comments after the, after the election, and he's, and his primary thought or kind of assessment was that we needed to act. Um, he believed that the American public, the voters, uh, basically they felt that we haven't moved quickly enough. And so, you know, you know, we go back to we laid out we laid out our scores uh, through through the Treasury's blog, and we've uh, kind of you know laid out how this is go the revenue is going to be uh, is going to be done. And so he pretty much feels that we just have to act. We cannot um, we cannot not deliver for the American public. Um, and so it's not about it's it's not about uh, you know it's it's basically about getting action, and the time is now to get this done. And so that's how his assessment is. Um, he continues to talk to members, uh, continue to, to lay out, okay, look, you know, this bill, if we get this through, it's going to help inf inflation, right? That's a key, that's a key understanding component of it as well, is what the Build Back Better Act is going to do. And from what I understand, the, the plan to vote on the bipartisan infrastructure is at least scheduled for 4.30 this afternoon. Would that affect the president's plans to leave town? 
Um, that obviously has already passed the Senate, therefore be ready for his signature as soon as it could get here. What's the impact on all of that? So I don't have anything more on his schedule. Um, clearly the president uh, wants this to be done as soon as possible. If it's today, that's a, that's wonderful. That's better for the American public. I don't have any uh, any announcement to make about his schedule for today. We want to know when he's going to depart. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Green. So your administration is negotiating cash payments for some illegal immigrants who are separated from family members under the last administration. Why give taxpayer money to people who broke federal law to get here? You like this question, Peter. It's we talked about question. we talked it's, about this yesterday. But not to the heart of the, the point, which is that these people broke the law to come here and they are gonna I, get well, hundreds yeah, of thousands so, of dollars in taxpayer money. A couple of things. I mean I cannot speak to this from here. This is Department of Justice. And that, we that's, asked them and they said no comment, so we have to oh, ask you. Well I, and I'm telling you that this is in litigation and so you have to talk to Department of Justice about this. This is not something that I can speak from here on the particulars, on the specifics. But you know, I said this to you yesterday, Peter. One of the things that we have to remember what why we're in this place that we're we are today is because we had an administration that had an inhumane, immoral policy that was taking babies away from their families, from their mothers. That's the that was the policy of the last administration. That is why we are here today. And that's you asking me this question that I actually cannot answer because you got to go to the Department of Justice to get the particulars. But just be clear, this is that's why this is happening today. Okay, so Mitch McConnell and Chuck Grassley have written a letter to the Attorney General. They say that any settlements to illegal aliens because they violated the law are wrong. Does the President agree with that or disagree with that? So yesterday I addressed and, and I clarified the President's comments on the thinking on this because you asked him a question and he answered it directly. But anything about the process, again, anything about the specifics or the particulars, I can't answer from here behind this podium, okay. so you would have to go to Department of then, Justice. Then to internal White House processes, when the ACLU heard the President dismiss miss the idea of $450,000 payments the other day. Uh, the ACLU came out and they said he may not have been fully briefed about the actions of his very own Justice Department. So is the President being kept out of the loop about immigration policy making? Again, Peter, the President was asked, you asked him a question, a direct question, he was answering it. I cannot say any more than that. Uh, okay, final one then. Yep. There is a long line to get into this country legally. Is there any kind of discussion about giving people who are coming here the right way money? Why would I, why would we be giving people who are coming here the right way money? Why are you giving people who came here the wrong I, way? Money? I mean, but I, I don't understand the, the the question. What is the, you're, you're saying that we should give immigrants. we should we should give people just money who are coming through? I don't understand the question. You're giving people who immigrated here illegally money. Like I said, like I said, that's the Department of Justice. That's you're going to have to ask them that question. Okay. Cool. okay. So if it passes, does the White House want Speaker Pelosi to send over the infrastructure bill for the president's signature immediately, or is it your preference that that waits until the Build Back Better plan gets a vote? So if if uh, if the Build Back Better um, infrastructure bill passes today, the president's going to to sign it. That is, uh, the, and and he but he also wants to make sure that we get the Build Back Better Act done as well, the framework that he put together. So these both bills are critically important to him. Uh, he wants to move both of them forward uh, as quickly as possible to again deliver for for the middle class families the middle class Americans and if when Bill Biff Bill, Bill Beck, uh, when Biff <laughs> and all there's so many B's if the infrastructure bill is passed today he will sign it absolutely it's important to get that done for the American public stay in town to I don't this. have anything more to share I know you guys are trying to get that for me I don't have anything more to share about his schedule um, and so like I said he's going to continue to work in lockstep with Speaker Pelosi to get this done and work closely with um, with Senator Schumer as well has he talked to Speaker Pelosi today uh, I, I don't have any calls to read out I know that but I mean you just I, think they're working with lockstep surely you I, know they've well it's it's his staff our staff and the president as well I do not have anything to read out to you but like like I said we're working in lockstep to get this done this is incredibly important to the president as you all know good right. Stephen I want to ask you about some of the changing contours of the Build Back Better Reconciliation Bill just in the last couple of days yeah. in addition to putting paid leave back into the bill uh, the Democrats yeah. also have added uh, they've uh, raised the, the limit on state and local tax deductions 
all year, uh, the White House has been saying that that would be too expensive to do. What changed, and, and why is the White House backing it now? Well, as you know, as you just stated, that is not something that um, we clearly put into uh, the original bill. Look, so. But the president understands from both Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer that for this bill to pass, it needs to address uh, the SALT issue. And because many members of Congress believe the 2017 tax law unfairly targeted their states and localities, including middle class uh, income Americans, with a $10,000 cap. So it is a long-term sustainable reform that doesn't add at all to the de deficit over the decade. And over that period, it will mean that millionaires and billionaires actually pay more than they would over uh, otherwise. Uh, the agreement reached in the House of Representatives would raise the cap to 72500 fully paying for itself across this decade. It's a sustainable solution. That means those with lower incomes would be able to fully write off their state and local taxes, while millionaires and billionaires would see their deductions cut back and pay more over time. This is one part of an overall package, as you can imagine, Stephen, that, that asks more from the highest income Americans. Separate matter. Yep. Last night, uh, the White House confirmed that uh, one of the uh, members of the traveling party uh, in Scotland came down with COVID. Um, can you say whether this person was a, either a commissioned officer, as you said you would disclose, or a senior advisor of someone who was uh, a trusted advisor to the president. So I'll say this, well, um, just to, to confirm and so folks know, and I think people know this already, one member of the president's traveling party tested positive through a lateral flow test on Tuesday for COVID-19. Although additional tests to date have been inconclusive, this individual, individual did not have close contact with the president and is not exhibiting any symptoms. Uh, the person has remained in Scotland to, to complete the quarantine period with the support of the administration. But just back to my question, is this yeah. person either a commissioned officer or a senior advisor? So let me, let me just give you a little bit of what our protocol is. So, um, you know, because we want to make sure that we are transparent, we provide updates on any White House official who tests positive for COVID-19 that the White House medical unit deems as having had close contact with the president, vice president, first lady, and second, gen second gentleman. So that could include the individual's name if they uh, consent to share it. So the criteria for who is in close contact with the president is determined that by the White House medical unit and is in, li in line with CDC guidance. But just to nail it down, is the White House no longer sticking by its pledge to name? Well, well I just laid out what our, it is close contact. Whoever, whoever is, is considered by the White House medical unit to have close contact with, the, with, one, of the four, with one of the four principles or either of the principles. That no is, well, I, just, I just read to you what our protocol so is. In close contact. Exactly. Thank you. They were not in close contact. We are. We're just being transparent here because, um, you know, because uh, you know they did stay back, uh, and so we just want to. And we've been asked this question, so we're we're making sure that we're giving the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Oh, oh, thank you. I, I just wanted to. I, I know you've been talking about um, the the president is. Both of these bills are very important yeah. to the president. He's pushing on this. I guess I just wonder, at this point, what, what is the leverage that the president has? Say, for instance, and I know there are a lot of contours, a lot of things are changing right now, but if you if the, the infrastructure bill does pass today, and then moderates decide they do not want to do the larger spending bill on climate and child care and all of those things, what can the president do to make sure that the second, the, the larger bill gets passed? Yeah, but I, I would say this, the president has been in contact with you know, moderates and progressive with, uh, you know, the big tent party that we have. And they've been in, out, in and out of here, out of the, uh, the Oval Office, out of the White House. The, the White House, uh, my colleagues, the White House, his White House uh, staff has been meeting with them regularly. And so I would say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to really get into a hypothetical, but we've been in close contact with all of them. The reason why the president put forth the Build Back Better framework, which was about a week ago, is because he, what he heard, right, what he heard from both sides and wanted to make sure he put forth something that he believed was going to get passed, uh, that was going to get the 50, the 50 votes from the Senate. So we're just moving forward with where we are. We put, he put together the framework. Yes, paid leave is being discussed and being put, is put back in, which is something that is very personal to him, making sure that people can afford uh, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, right? Be able to not have to pay their whole entire paycheck on getting, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, pharmacy drugs is important as well. So that we see that's in there. So all of these things are so important to the American public. And so that is the, the main thing. So and the other thing, too, to think about is that Democrats agree. They're all on the same page. They all understand that we have to move forward with the president's economic policies. What we're talking about is dif different components and what that looks like. And so now the, the speaker is working very closely with her members and, uh, and her leadership to get this done. And so uh, we're going to continue having those conversations and making sure that we get this voted on. Would the president be okay with holding um, votes? on both bills until after the CBO has scored a uh, bill back better? Well, I already answered that, right? We put, we put our scores out uh, uh, yesterday. Um, and we've been pretty transparent on that component. Uh, the president believes that we have to take action. If anything, that he has said himself that we saw from earlier this week, voters want us, and American public, I should say, want us to take action. And so we have to deliver for the tens of millions of Americans uh, who have been left behind, where the economy hasn't worked for them. And so that's what the president's been very clear about. He wants to get this done as soon as possible. If it's today, he's working for it today. If it's today, that's wonderful. But we want to get this done. That is the, the president's main priority. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, well, quick follow up on that, actually. Just, yep. You were saying that the president has been speaking to progressives and moderates and yep, the last days. couple That's the last I, couple of weeks we've seen that. I'm just hoping you can yep. provide some clarity on, even if we can't name which members he's been speaking to, just what his message is at this point. Is it as simple as vote yes on these today, or is it pointing to the yeah. scores that you put out last night? Just a little bit of clarity on Well, I mean, I'll saying. just share with you what he said this morning, which I think had a lot of uh, clarity and was sp spoke specifically on where and what he's thinking, like the Build Back Better framework lowers your bills for health care, child care, prescription drugs, and preschool, and families get a tax cut. That is the message. That is what we're trying to do. That is what we're trying to deliver for the American public. And also, it fights inflation, right? If we get this done, uh, it will help uh, it will help deal with the inflation that we're seeing with inflation. So the president has been very clear on this. This is about the American public. This is about helping the middle class, helping them um, get, get a fair shot, as the president says. Make sure they're not left behind. And so that's the message. And here's the thing, Democrats on the Hill, they understand that. They understand that we have to move forward with an, econo with a, an economy that works for all. What we're trying to figure out, what you have seen, is just working out, working through the components. And right now, uh, Speaker Pelosi and her leadership is working to getting a vote on Build Back Better and moving forward with BIF. If uh, moving forward, if we see the agenda pass advance today or mm -hmm. in the days to come, just what, what, what's the White House strategy going to be like to actually sell this and make it an electoral winner, right? Because for yeah. many American people, they associate these packages as these sprawling legis this sprawling yeah. legislation that's been locked in congressional gridlock, but they may not actually see the exact benefits. It may take a while for them to see direct benefits well, as well. I, I, so can yep. we see officials so, go out doing trips, and what will they be talking about? Absolutely. Clearly, we want to, we want to get this to, to a place where we get it passed so we can talk about the next steps after that, that happens. But I, would, I also would say to you, Zolan, that there are components of this bill that's very popular. You know, we've seen that in the polling. There are things in this bill that the American public love and understand and need. And if you think about the American Rescue Plan, right, you think about the child tax credit, which which the American public is already feeling, right? If you are a family, nine out of 10 families with kids are gonna get a middle tax cut. And that's important. Uh, and so that is something in this BBB framework, this Build Back Better framework, that we're trying to continue to extend that child tax credit, which, again, people are feeling right now. They're able to have those extra dollars so that they can, you know, buy supplies for their kids, so that they can make sure that they go to that doctor's appointment for their kids. And it also has cut poverty in, amongst children by 50 percent. So they are seeing some of the some of the factors that we saw from the American Rescue Plan. So now we're trying to move it forward and with these other historical components that is that is in the bill to get that across the finish line so we can really see that transformational change for the for the American family. You mentioned preschool. Why are faith-based okay. child okay. care centers not eligible? Thanks. I'm asking okay. a legitimate question here. Okay. Why yeah, are th faith-based th child for care him. centers um, not eligible for Build Back Better money to make renovations to their yeah. facilities? Just go ahead. Ask so your question. question. I, I, as I have expected, a, badge, I can ask a number of our states have a lot filed suit against the administration. 
over this vaccine requirement for workers at large companies. I'd like uh, to get your response to that, and also, how confident are you that this mandate can withstand these challenges? Um, so we are very confident that it can. Um, just a couple of things that I wanted to, to just lay out so that people understand. As for the legal side of this, uh, let me be crystal clear to avoid what appears to be possible misinformation or disinformation around the emergency temporary standard being a vaccine mandate. That would be on its face incorrect, as has been explicit for months. It is a standard for safe workplace to either comply with weekly testing or to be vaccinated. And second, as outlined, the Department of Labor has a responsibility to keep workers safe and the legal authority to do so. To quote from last night's call on this, uh, the, the new emergency temporary standard is well within OSHA's authority under the law and consistent with OSHA's requirements to protect workers from health and safety hazards, including infectious disease. OSHA has broad authority uh, to issue and enforce health and safety standards to protect workers in staying safe and healthy uh, in their jobs. So this is something that we believe that we have authority to do, that the Department of Labor does. So this is a, a power, because this is a power that Congress empowered uh, OSHA with through a law that has been on the books for more than 50 years. And to reiterate, we focus on accelerating our path out of this pandemic and saving lives and why others are not in, in, in wanting to do that is a question for them. So we believe we have the, the, uh, the authority to do this, the Department of Labor. And again, this is about saving people's lives. This is what this is about um, and making sure that their workplace is safe. Again, Dr. Why are faith-based child care centers not eligible for Build Back Better money to make renovations in the facility? Yeah, for sure. The president, when he was overseas, suggested that he may be looking at different options of COPEC Plus, is not going to increase the supply. Is the president considering tapping the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? Is, is there a timetable for making a decision on that? So I, I don't have an, an announcement at this time. As you can imagine, we're, gonna, we're trying to uh, we're going to use every tool at our, t our tool belt in our tool belts to get to do what we can, um, assessing and monitoring the situation on the oil process very, very closely uh, every day. I just don't have additional actions on this. And then he met yesterday with uh, Fed Chairman Powell and also a Fed Governor Franer. Uh, what is his timetable for making a decision on some of the vacancies on the Federal Reserve? I mean, he said, yeah. you know, it could be very soon. Is, it, is he looking at a decision next week? So just to be clear, I'm not going to confirm any meetings, internal meetings that the president uh, uh, may have had or may not may have not had. Uh, as the president said this week, he expects to make a decision. He said this just the other day on Tuesday when he was in, St in Scotland uh, during his press conference. I don't have anything to confirm beyond that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, two questions for you. Uh, first of all, uh, the climate change and he's using the word now adaptability and I, I want to go back to that and drill down on that just a bit because what this administration seems to be saying is that the life that your children will lead my grandchildren are going to leave are going to be substantially different than what you and I have seen as far as climate on the planet is he concerned that it with that we're not going to be able to at all uh, mitigate the climate change that we're going to, that for the species to survive, we're going to have to adapt, or does it mean policy adaptation? Well, I think in general, um, the president wants to do everything that we can to fight climate change uh, and wants to be a leader, uh, not just here, right, as president of the United States, but globally. And I think that's what you've seen from the president since day one. He said when he walked into the administration that climate is one of the crises that he has, that we all have to deal with as a country. Uh, and so this is what he's going to, he's focusing on. We just went to COP26 uh, and talked through a bunch of, uh, a bunch of ways that we can deal uh, with to fighting climate. You, when you think about the Build Back Better plan, when you think about uh, the, uh, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure, there's close to there's more than nine billion dollars in both to to work in a historical way to fight climate. Right. So that's what the president's focusing on, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to make sure that we actually deal with this issue that's in front of that us. That I understand, yeah. and I do have a follow-up. But there, yep. uh, that I understand. But are you saying that we are the the, the crisis is for the survivability of the species, or are you saying I that mean, adaptability I, is about, I, I, about your 
how you would attack the problem. Yeah, I, look, I, all I can speak to you right now is how to attack the problem, which is what I laid out, and how we can be leaders in this and making sure that we really do everything that we can, right, not just here in the United States, but globally, to fight climate change. And so that's the focus of the president, and that's what we're trying to do to get this done. And Build Back Better, the Build Back Better Act, and the bipartisan infrastructure uh, uh, of plan framework will get that done, will get us closer to getting that done. And then the follow-up on, on, you were talking about, um, You've had a number of people that are celebrities with millions of followers who followers who have come out speaking against vaccines. And then the latest, we've seen that the MVP of the NFL finally admitted that he lied and he never got vaccinated, and that uh, he considers it a woke crowd that speaks about mm -hmm. and two vaccinations. Has this administration ever thought of reaching out to some of those people who have that type of influence? to talk to them about getting vaccinated, or is it simply what you all are saying off the top? Have you worked with people individually? So you've seen us, you've seen influencers come through to the White House to talk about the importance of getting vaccinated and using their platforms, right, to talk to their followers. And that is something that we have worked really closely with uh, influencers, with people who have, uh, you know, access to uh, millions and millions of followers. And we continue to do that. We have an, an amazing digital team uh, that continues to do that work. And you've, in, you've even seen the president partner up uh, with some folks in that space. And so we'll, we'll continue to do that. Is but what concern? I want... Well, but here's what I, I want to say. I want to say is that in this, past, in this 18 month of the pandemic, we've we've lost more than 740,000 lives to COVID-19. And uh, we are now in a position where when the president first walked into the administration, he made sure that he put together a comprehensive vaccination program. And now, I just laid that out earlier, 80% of the American public have at least one shot. And we, I just, I just uh, also laid out the jobs numbers. Uh, one of the reasons why the jobs numbers are where they are uh, today, where we are actually you know, making progress with the economy is one, because people are getting vaccinated. So so that is so clearly important, and also the American Rescue Plan uh, that he put forth to be able to put people, put some money in people's pockets, and really give people a middle middle class, a middle in the middle class, a tax cut. So those are things that are really inc incredibly important. And so the only way that we're going to get this pandemic behind us uh, and move past it is if we continue to get people vaccinated. So that's incredibly important, and that is our mes message. And also we we understand and we have seen vaccine vaccination requirements work, uh, and they have been successful. And so that's what we're going to continue to do and uh, work and work closely uh, with states and businesses to, to continue to get people uh, vaccinated. No, I mean, I just laid out that, you know, I could go back to it about how, how, how I gave an update of this week on how, you know, how we're doing in the state of the pandemic. Here we go. We hit 80 percent of adults with at least one shot and 70 percent of adults fully vaccinated. We just the CDC decision made 28 million kids age five uh, through 11 eligible for vaccinations. So all of these things are incredibly uh, um, important. And if you look at the vaccination requirement, we'll cover 100 million American workers. That's how we're going to get to the other side of this. That's how we're going to move forward to make sure that we put the pandemic behind us. And that's the, that's our message. Vaccination va vaccine requirements work. Uh, and also, they, getting a vaccine is safe. It's easy. It, it's it's, uh, it's easy to do. You can get it at your ph the pharmacy. You can get it at your doctor's office. Uh, it's free, and so we encourage people uh, to get that. It will, um, you know, it will, uh, you know, it will protect you. It will um, get you in a place where you feel comfortable to get back to work. That's what we're seeing in these jobs numbers. Can I, can I ask you a question on Ethiopia? Who else? Can I ask you a question on Ethiopia? Um, Ethiopia is on the brink of a civil I, war. Excuse me. No, but Go I'm ahead. asking you a question. Uh, you I understand. From the Go, ahead. Go, ahead. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eugene. Ask the question. I am. I haven't taken a... Eugene. Go ahead, Eugene. Go ahead. Um, on to what you're talking about, COVID. There was yep. a lot of talk at the beginning of the administration um, <laughs> and, and during the pandemic about uh, herd immunity, for example. Like mm -hmm. what numbers we could hit before people really started to get back to normal and got through the pandemic. So I'm curious what the scientists are telling you guys about what's the percentage of, I think you said 70% um, yeah. of that are fully vaccinated, 80 that have at least one shot. 
So what's the percentage we need to get to? What's the number we need to get to of Americans vaccinated before we do get to the I mean, the you know, Eugene, I, I understand your question and I get it. I get to wanting to um, get a sense of the herd immunity, but that's not our focus right now. Our focus is to make sure that we do everything that we can to get people vaccinated. Um, our, our focus is to make sure, like now we have five to 11, young kids from five to 11 uh, who, can, who can now get vaccinated, which is incredibly important. And parents, you know, working with parents to make that happen, I think that's in very important. Uh, ha having these vaccine requirements, uh, that's incredibly important. I just mentioned 100 million workers will now be able, uh, will, that, that's, that's what that, that requirement is going to touch, 100 million workers. We know that getting people vaccinated uh, will you know help the economy make people feel safer uh, we saw that we're seeing this right now with the jobs numbers that we just saw today and which is incredibly important and critical 620,000 a month on average and over 5.6 million jobs created since he took office and that's a lot is because of the president's leadership it's a lot is because of the American Rescue Plan and getting those shots in arms so 531,000 jobs in October and the employment rate fell to 4.6 percent so in order to get get back or getting this getting this economy going again this is what we need to do so that's our that's our focus that's why we've made it available in a way that it's free uh, so that people can get it fi you know five miles away from their home and majority in majority of, of places across the country and we're going to just going to continue to have those conversations um, and back to the the yeah. selling of the build back better and yeah. the BIF and whatever the <laughs> the letter yeah, I know. Build Back Better <laughs> Act yeah. and Bipartisan yeah. Infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Um, They're both great. Exactly. We're trying to get them moving for the American public. Um, but the when you guys talk about think about selling it, we saw that with the child tax credit, we did a poll and just yeah. thirty percent of people gave President Biden credit for the CTC yeah. and only forty seven percent gave Democrats credit for the C C T C. Yeah. So what are you guys how are you guys envisioning that you're actually gonna sell this in a way that people say yeah. Democrats gave this to us, President Biden gave this? So I think you're 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 right. Like we have to go out there and talk about these bills, right? And the thing is the president has done that, right? He's traveled uh, across across the country and talked about his Build Back Better agenda. He's talked about the infrastructure bill. We've we've seen cabinet secretaries do the same. Uh, we've heard from White House uh, officials here. My colleagues do the same. And we're just going to have to continue to have those conversations. And I think uh, once we get those two pieces of legislation to the across the finish line, and we'll you know we'll we'll have a we'll you know we'll do you know we'll get out there do a blitz and make sure that uh, that messaging is out there on what we have done and how we've delivered for the American for the American people and so that's really important but the focus right now is we got to make sure we get this out of Congress and continue to work with members on the hill to make sure that we deliver again this this transformational and historical uh, piece of piece two pieces of uh, legislation so that we can actually change uh, and invest in people in the Americans lives okay one more okay one more uh, JJ did I take one from you not, not yet. Okay. Could you explain when the policy on the um, revealing the White House commissioned officers who have COVID, when did that change? Because on July 20th, John Jensaki specifically said she revealed the names of all commissioned officers, all the senior staff who have COVID. She would be, she would err on the side of being transparent and reveal it. I mean, look, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you what our policy is, um, and I'm happy to read it over to you again. Uh, you know, our commitment, again, is for transparency. So we provide updates on White House official who test positive for COVID-19 that the White House medical unit deems as having had close contact with president, with the president, vice president, first lady, or second gentleman. Uh, that could include the individual's name if they consent to share it. So they have to consent to share it, to share that. And the criteria for who is in close contact contact with the president is determined by the White House medical unit and it is in line with the CDC guidance that that is our policy that's what I just read to you I don't have anything more beyond that I just read you what our policy is and that's what I have to share yeah okay thank you everybody does the uh, president believe might want to open the floor up to more reporters. Well, that's